Hello, my name is Benjamin Hare. Welcome back for the second part of my video series on installing and using GPG for Win. I'm in a situation where I need to transfer some files to a friend. I need them to be safe and secure in transit. Therefore, I've got to encrypt them. Now, my first video talked about downloading and installing GPG for Win. Now, in this particular video, what I'm going to do is generate a private key and then send my public key over to my buddy. So, in order to do that, now I've already installed the GPG for Win program. In order to do that, go over to GPG for Win and run Cleopatra. Cleopatra is the key manager for the GNU PG. So I just need to wait for that to load. It's a uh, it's a Java app, so it's not the fastest uh, program out there. Okay, once Cleopatra is up and running. Here's what it looks like. Now, in this particular case, I don't have any keys right now, which is just fine. I'm going to generate a key, and then I will send my buddy my public key. So what I'm going to do is go to File, New cert Certificate, and we've got two options here. In this case, it's just going to be a personal PGP care pair that I'm going to share with a buddy of mine. So it doesn't need to be vetted by any certificate authority. Type in my information, and you can put in whatever you want here. Um, comment is optional, whatever you want. Under advanced settings, the default is RSA, um, a 2 megabit, or megabyte, I should say, I'm sorry. Um, no. 2 megabit um, encryption, and that's fine. I'm going to use this for signing and encryption. I'm not going to use it for authentication. And by default, it's valid for one year, and that's all I need to be. Uh, I need it to be valid for. In fact, I went through this whole video previously and imported a, a key I used last year and found that it was not valid. So I'm remaking the video. Okay. Just go with the defaults, basically, in this window. Type in your information. Now, the interesting thing here, this took me a long time to figure out, it doesn't really matter what email you put in here, because that's not the actual email address I'm going to use to transfer the file. It just has to have something in both of those fields. Click Next. Tells me the encryption type and size and what I'm going to be using it for. Create the key. Now it's going to ask me for a passphrase. The passphrase is important, because it's I'm going to use this passphrase anytime I decrypt uh, a file. So, and when I, I will also make a backup of this file, but in order to import that file into a key store, again, I'm going to need to remember this. So make sure you've got a good um, passphrase here. You have to type it twice. Provided they agree, it's going to create it, and there's my fingerprint. This fingerprint is important um, if you if you ever needed to confirm that uh, a key pair matched up, you could confirm this fee this key print. I mean fingerprint. Ugh. Okay, I need to make a backup of this. Just in case, I'm going to save it in my docs folder. I'm going to replace my old key. This is the, the one that expired last year. I'm going to save this in ASCII armor format so it's um, plain text. Okay, now this is the secret key. So I wouldn't want this to fall into the wrong hands. Luckily, if it did fall in the wrong hands, it's still protected by a passphrase, but um, in any case, I just want to show you, I'm going to open this up in Notepad and show you what it looks like. No, oh, whoops. This is the old key that expired. I'm actually looking in the wrong folder here. So let's go over to Evaluate and see where my file is. I'll refresh this. Okay. 
I thought that was where I saved it. Because I didn't. Where did I save this? Docs. Oh, whoops. I didn't put the right name on it. Okay. Look at my docs folder. Can I refresh that? That should be it. Oh no, it's the ASC file. Drop that in there. There's my private key block. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, now that I've got the private key block ready to go, I can create a public key block and send that to my buddy. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to right click on it export my certificate and in by default it puts the fingerprint in there which I think is absolutely worthless well I wouldn't say worthless but it's not as user-friendly as this there we go now this is going to be my public key I'm going to export that to my docs folder there we are and should I replace that? I might have some files still encrypted under the old one. So I'm going to put the year on there. Actually, I'll put the whole date. Save that. Okay, let's take a look at that file. I just want to show you what it looks like. There we are. This is my public key block. Now, I'm going to send that over to my buddy so he can encrypt files. Now, once he has that, he's going to need to generate a uh, PGP key pair and send me back his public key. Like, I'm going to send that over to him. So, let's go do that right now. I'll go ahead and bring up my Gmail account. And I'll send it over to him.